Pre-calc chapter 5, section 3. So we're going to be solving our trig functions, so trig, trig equations. And we're going to look at just basic trig equations. We'll look at multiple angles and then uh, inverse trig to solve these equations. Uh, basically, to solve a, a simple one where we have cosine of x here, and we have some other operations occurring to it, we first want to isolate our trig function. So we could add the 1 to both sides, and then we could divide both sides by 2 to find cosine of x is 1 half. And so now we're basically just using our unit circle to figure out where in the world is our cosine 1 half at. Um, and so we have to call our unit circle our cosine, where we're talking about our x value. So if our x value right here is 1 half, which triangle are we talking about? So I can draw my right triangle to the circle, to my right angle, and I have two of them. I can go up or down. And I have a terminal side or my hypotenuse of those right triangles. So those are really the two right triangles we're looking at. So the solution for this are these two angles. It's this angle right here, which you should have an idea for that triangle. And then we also have the one all the way around the terminal side, realizing that the x value there is 1 half. And so the two measures there is this would be the, the 60 degrees or the pi thirds. And then in red here, it still has the same reference angle of 60 degrees. Um, but if we do the 2 pi minus the, the pi thirds, so we're getting the 5 pi thirds. And so these are the two angles where it occurs. Now, there's not just two angles here. There's an infinite amount of angles. So at that pi thirds, it occurs anytime it's pi thirds plus 2 pi or minus 2 pi. So we have all our coterminal angles. So you can write pi thirds plus 2 pi n. Uh, and then uh, you can also write the 5 pi thirds plus 2 pi n. Now the n value represents the uh, number of periods or 2 pi's that you're going around the circle. And, um, so how many times you'd be going around the circle and then if it's negative it just means you're going the opposite direction. So some people will say plus or minus 2 pi n or we said plus 2 pi n, the negative could be our n value, you could just change the direction. So when we're given our answers, realize there's an infinite amount of answers if we're not restricting our domain to one unit circle. So combine like terms. So we can solve these. As we go through, we're going to solve these and get a little more complicated. But notice how we say within this interval. So this, this between 0 and 2 pi, means one unit circle. So we don't have to do the plus or minus 2 pi n. And so to combine like terms, we first want to manipulate this. We can uh, add sine of x to both sides. So I'm getting 2 sine x minus root 2 equals 0. And then I want to isolate the trig function, so I'm going to add the root 2 and then divide by 2. So this is our basic solving techniques of just isolating the sine x. And it's the same setup. Where in the world on the unit circle are we at if we have the sine of x is root 2 over 2? And so sine is our y value, so we have the y value root 2 over 2. Uh, and so I could draw out here too, so the y values so we actually get our terminal sides from the origin. And so we're dealing with these two right triangles, knowing our y value here is root 2 over 2 for both these triangles. And so we have our measures of pi force, or we have our measure of 3 pi force, our two angles uh, that the x could be. So we're finding our actual angle measure to make this equation true. Factoring. Um, and so we can use some factoring, and to factor, we first want to put it in standard form. So for this one, I would want to subtract the 2 sine x to both sides. So then I can see that in both terms, they both have sine and sine. So I pull out the sine x, and I'm left with sine x minus 2. And now it's factor, we set each of these factors e equal to 0. So sine x equals 0 and then sine x minus 2 equals 0 and you solve both of these. So this one's already set up. Let's write this as sine x equals 2. Now we need to find our angles. So where is sine equal to 0? I mean you should start to get pretty good to realize that it's at 0 degrees and it's at pi. That's when our y value is at 0. Where is sine of x equal to 2? 
there's none. Sine is never 2. It's between negative 1 and 1. Uh, and so then we're dealing with these two, and we could have uh, 0 plus the 2 pi n, or pi plus 2 pi n. But we can combine these into 1. We can say it's just 0 plus pi n, which is the same thing as just saying pi n. So that I get all the way down to that. If you want a visual representation of why that occurs, it's because our answers are here at 0, then again here at pi. So it's at 0 pi, then it would be again at 2 pi, and then 3 pi, and then 4 pi. And so it's all of the pi's or multiples of pi that our solutions can be. And so that would be the answer. And so um, I'll actually do this one as well. So I won't have you try it. So you just need a factor. We have our trinomial equal to 0. So this one is just one unit circle. So I'm going to factor 2 cosine x and cosine x. And then we have to have 1 and 1. And we want a negative and a positive. And I can check my OI. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 1 times 1 is 1. So if I add those, I get my negative 1 OI value. So I can set each of these equal to 0. So this cosine x equals negative 1 half. And this cosine x would equal 1. So we have to figure out where in the unit circle is our x value negative 1 half. And so if you need to visualize that, so we're up here at negative 1 half for our x values, or a y, our x value of 1, which is over here at 0. So this is 0 degrees. And then we're at 2 pi thirds and 4 pi thirds would be these angles. So we're at 0 degrees, then 2 pi thirds, and then 4 pi thirds. And so I'm using my reference angle right here of my 60 degrees to get that measure. So those are the three angles, and I do not need to give anything uh, the plus 2 pi in because I'm within one unit circle. So using trig identities, these are a little more difficult. Uh, when you have multiple trig functions within one, we have to use our identities to change them into the same trig function first. So secant squared x, uh, I know that relates back to tangent. So I know tangent squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. So then secant squared x, I can rewrite that. Plus 1. So I'm rewriting that using the tangent. Now I need to distribute the 3. So I have 3 tangent squared x plus 3 minus 2. So now I can combine like terms. We have our positive 3 here minus 4. And so that's negative 1. And we have a 3 tangent squared x minus 2 tangent squared x, which is just tangent squared x. So now we get down to our one trig function. So I want to isolate that. So let's add 1 to both sides. And then to get rid of the square, we're going to square root both sides. So we square root both sides. So we get plus or minus, and the square root of 1 is 1. So on the unit circle, where is tangent plus or minus 1, and that's all of these 45 reference angles. And so that's going to be at pi force, and we can do plus the 2 pi n, 3 pi force, plus 2 pi n, and then we can do 5 pi force, plus 2 pi n, and 7 pi force plus 2 pi n. But we can combine some of these. So if they have the same distance between them, so I know that this distance between here and here, and then here and here, and here and here, and here and here are all the same. So if I just take the pi force and I add the distance, I would include all the other solutions. You can kind of see I can add these two together as one solution because those are 180 degrees away. And then these two here are 180 degrees this direction, but they all are going to be pi force plus pi halves 
in a way. So that would be the final answer. That would include all four of these and their multiples because you're doing pi force and then every pi halves which is that 90 degree right angle you get all the other angles as, as well. So I'm hoping not only can you give me all of these angles but you can write them in the simplest form as well. This one I'll let you try but um, I'll give you a hint. Um, you need to deal with the different trig functions but you can't mess around with them right away because they're not the Pythagorean identity where it's like cosine squared or sine squared. So to deal with that, you actually need to square both sides first to get some values uh, that are square, which allow you to use Pythagorean identity to then convert them into the same trig function. So you can give that a shot and we'll do that in class as well. I want to get to multiple angles. And so multiple angles is the sine of 2x. We don't know this angle, but the angle theta here is 2 of x. So x is only really half of the angle. So we're doing these problems. It sometimes helps students to first find it as if it was like theta. Find what the angle would be. So if I isolate our sine here, where is our sine value, our y value, root 3 over 2, that's the long side of the 30, 60, 90. So we are at pi thirds and two pi thirds to have a 60 degree reference angle. So we're at pi thirds plus two pi n and two pi thirds plus two pi n. Now the issue with this is that was our theta, but theta is not our x value. We're trying to solve for just the x. So we have more here. This is what theta equals for both of them. Now we have a whole other question, uh, equation to deal with. We have really that theta is 2x, so let's, let's substitute that in. This is really 2x equals pi thirds plus 2 pi n, and this is 2x equals 2 pi thirds plus 2 pi n. So now we need to solve both of these. So we're going to solve this. We need to multiply both sides by reciprocal or divide by 2. And uh, I'm going to multiply by 1 half on both sides for both the equations. But notice how you have to multiply not only the angle we're dealing with the pi's, we also multiply by the multiples of that as well. So if I distribute that, I find x here is pi thirds times 1 half is pi 6 plus 2 pi n times 1 half is just pi n. And the same thing here, this we end up getting uh, the two to reduce out to so get pi thirds plus pi n. And so these are the actual answers. And how many times is that in a unit circle is a whole other question because we're dealing with the pi six plus pi n. So you have pi six plus another pi, so it's those two. Pi thirds plus pi here. So we have four times within one unit circle that these, uh, this equation would be true. So multiple angles, I would suggest you first find the actual angle and then you solve for x which is part of the angle. And so we can try this one. Um, this is another factoring problem, so I'll let you give this one a shot. Uh, factor to solve for x. And we're going to call that good for the night and we'll see you tomorrow.